John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Look, these words, I'm sure you've heard at this point, but man, it's necessary to repeat them because we need to be reminded. If you're like me, it's easy to get caught up and forget that we have an enemy whose purpose is threefold. Kill, steal, destroy. Matter of fact, in the words of Yahshua, he says he only, his only purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, I want to remind you of these words. Why? Because um, in order to steal, kill, and destroy, of course, if he presents himself as a thief, as a murderer, and such, uh, and destroyer, he's not going to be very effective. So, but if he presents himself as one who's trying to help, look, I have a promise I have to give to you. If you do this, it's going to be great. If you do not follow the commands of God, if you fall into that or give into that temptation, if you think those thoughts, this is going to, uh, there's promises that are lies, but they're all set up to kill, steal, and destroy. Brothers and sisters, friends, whomever is watching, don't get it twisted. We have an enemy. There is one who is, is here whose only purpose is to take away. And it's not your family members. You know, uh, I believe it's in Ephesians that says, Our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and powers of this dark world. Your, your fight is not against your spouse. It's not against your children. It's not against your bosses. It's not against the government, believe it or not. It's not against any person. But it's against the principles and powers of this dark world who are trying to consume every single person and destroy and rip them up. Not just make them feel bad. Not just do something small, but completely obliterate every individual. Now, don't try to figure it out. Don't ask why and what's the purpose of it all. Just know that there's an entity out there like that trying to destroy your family, destroy your spouse, rip your kids apart. He's here. That spirit is present. And let it be so that we do everything in our power not to allow that to happen. And one, in a caution to... Uh, one caution I will leave you is watch the media. And I don't mean the news. I mean that all media forms, screen times, television, radio, video games, iPads, um, Internet, all these medias, guys, because they're filled with worldly influence to destroy, kill, and steal in such subtle ways, in such seemingly beautiful ways. See, you can have a movie or a song or all these things filled with so many great things, but so many innuendos and subtleties in order to debunk all the principles that we know are true in the Word of God, such as being wholesome and pure in our mind, in our body and spirit. Where is that now? You know, that's 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 uh, upheld as something archaic and arcane and outdated, and old. And we don't do that anymore. We where did this new thought come from the media? It comes from all the subtleties that slowly crept in and how we dress now, how we what what is appropriate to wear, what's trending, what's in style. Look at the look at the pattern. And I know it doesn't take a lot of thought because you get it. And it's easy to, to, to research. We see what's going on. Don't be deceived, guys. The purpose is to destroy us and to kill. And I'll leave us with a word of encouragement. In the next sentence that says, in Yahshua's words, he says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I love the idea of having life. And I love it even more of having it abundantly. And I believe in this and I pursue it diligently. Yes, I said I pursue it. For some have gotten comfortable and thought, well, it just comes to me. I'm a believer in, no, he says, seek, seek and you will find. He's come to offer it. But guys, we have to claim that. We have to embrace that. There's too many of my brothers and sisters who have become comfortable with being broke and poor, sick and destitute thinking that this is the state 
of an ideal Christian or disciple of Christ or, or um, however you call yourselves. This is not life and abundantly. Or some translations have life to the full. This can't be. What does he look like for his people to be broke? For his people to be sick, destitute, and, and borrowing, and begging? This is not the right idea. Matter of fact, to be um, in poverty, um, especially as you look at the scriptures in the Old Testament, um, will be a curse. One will be cursed to be, and we can understand why. One who is poor has fewer options. Fewer options to take care of his family, and more importantly, if you ask me, fewer options to advance the kingdom of God. He 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 becomes a slave to anyone who waves a dollar in front of him, any company, any person. And I think you know what I mean and what that looks like. We're running to and fro chasing the dollar, saying, well, I'd rather be poor because it's humble. Guys, look, he called us to have life and life abundantly, to be healthy, to eat well, to think well, to be wholesome in every way. And I'm excited that this is what he called us to, not just some grudgingly life where we scrape on by as meager disciples. But he says, no, 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 that's not what I called you to. So if that's in your mind, please change that thinking. That's not what he had in mind. That's a destroy, kill, steal. We want a life to the full. And I'm happy to say I'm living it and I'm living it more and more thanks to Yahweh and his promise. I hope this word has been a blessing to you. May Yahweh bless you and keep you.